All right, Paul, we have lots of nice orbits like we can get, low Earth orbit, geostationary orbit, and they have benefits. How do we actually get there? Okay, so, I mean, space is not very far away. No. I mean, we've talked about a low Earth orbit being a few hundred kilometers up. A few hundred kilometers that way is the city of Melbourne. Yeah. Now, if I want to get a bus ticket to Melbourne, it would cost me $50. Yeah. If I want to get a bus ticket to the International <laughs> Space Station, it's going to cost me about $20 million. Well, someone just paid $70 million, so yeah, it's gone up a little bit with inflation. So why does it cost about yeah. a million times more to go 500 kilometers this way than it does to go 500 kilometers that way? It's the same distance. It's the same distance. I mean, sure, it's going up and going up is harder, as we know every time we yep. climb some stairs. But a million times harder, 10 million times harder, that, that seems a seem, bit extreme. It does, doesn't it? I mean, it's not also, it's not enough just to go up, you have to go sideways fast enough to stay up. That's right, as but, we talk about. But you can actually do the calculation, you can work out how much energy you need to lift up and to go sideways fast enough, and it turns out it's, it's you know, a few tens of dollars to put a person into space purely if you have 100% energy efficiency. Okay. Which is, so why does it cost so much? And so, there was a famous argument actually made by a former director of the Mount Stromlo <laughs> Observatory, um, which was that he, he proved mathematically that space travel was impossible. <laughs> so here, here's how his proof goes. See if, you, see if you can spot the flaws with this proof. Because this is only, only a few years before the space was actually achieved. Yep. Um, so just so no one listened to him. <laughs> so Is he director now? No. <laughs> So let's imagine we take some really high explosive stuff like TNT or dynamite. Yep. And these liberate about 10 or 15 megajoules of energy That's right. per kilogram that you blow up. Okay, so one kilogram releases 20 megajoules. Yes, I mean, it depends ex ex exactly what mix of explosives yep. you're using. But you then work out how much energy you need to lift a kilogram into space yep. and give it so enough sideways velocity that it can stay there. Yep. And that's, depending on exactly what orbit, ballpark 20 to 30 megajoules per kilogram. Okay. So that means the energy in a kilogram of the most highly explosive things we have is not enough even to lift themselves into space, let alone anything else. That's right, because if you were to add extra weight on top, you would need more energy to lift that plus the TNT itself. Okay, so clearly space travel is impossible, right? If the most explosive things we know can't even lift themselves into space, let alone you, John and Glenn, or a, a, a weather satellite or anything else, uh, what hope do we have? Well, this becomes an interesting question, right? Because as you said, someone came up with this idea, uh, someone thought it, but it seems like there's a few flaws in this problem, right? Because one, don't we have better things than TNT? Yes, I mean, the benefit of explosives is not that they contain a particularly large amount of energy, but they release it really quickly. Yes. They have to, to produce a blast wave and destroy things. But if you're prepared to have something that burns more slowly, you can actually have things with more energy. For example, a ham sandwich, like I'm going to have for my lunch after this filming session. All right. A ham sandwich is about, it uh, depends exactly what you do, but it's about 30 megajoules per kilogram. So, so, more so, than TNT. so we're going to power ham sandwich rockets. Done. All right. Yes. Um, so whereas you petrol... Yep. Is your ballpark 50 megajoules per kilogram, the stuff you put in the back of your car. And the very best of possible things, like combining liquid oxygen with liquid hydrogen, can be up to 120 megajoules per kilogram. That's right. They don't release the energy so quickly. That's right. That's why you don't explode when you eat a ham sandwich. Yes. I mean, you have to put your ham sandwich in a blast proof box all the time. <laughs> uh, it releases it slowly in your stomach over the rest of the day, keeping you. Uh, uh, and that's a benefit. Yes. So, so the so the flaw. What you're saying is. So one flaw is yeah. we don't need to release it that quickly. Exactly. We don't want it to release that. That's quickly. right. Because plenty, plenty of rockets did release it too quickly. And boom. <laughs> that's right. So, Rocket goes out, not up. Yes. So you, and so there, that's one thing. There are things which contain enough energy, not a, by a huge factor, yep. but they might contain twice as much energy as you need to put themselves in space. Yep. Um, so that's, that's one benefit. Okay. Um, the other thing is, actually, you don't need to transport yourself into space. For, take one extreme. You could put all your fuel in a gun. Mm -hmm. I mean, when a gun fires, there's no propellant on the bullet. That's right. The propellant is all behind the bullet. And just gives that push, yeah. So you could imagine at one extreme having a very big gun and putting the astronauts in a bullet. In that case, you could have you know, several tons of explosive to fire one astronaut into space, uh -huh. and the explosive just stays in the gun. It doesn't okay. have to go into space. That's right. So the idea that you have to be able to lift a, your own weight into space doesn't necessarily apply. Okay. Now, of course, 
if you try to do that, you'll end up with astronaut puree. The, the, this is what uh, Jules Verne did in his original science fiction novel over 100 years ago. Mm. But in practice, the, the trouble is the acceleration would be so extreme that yeah. the astronaut would be turned into a puree inside the space probe. And Unless you make the gun so big, like a rail gun, that you can accelerate gradually. But it turns out the gun would have to be so long that you could just step off the top and be in space. Yep. It would extend to space already. So, but these two ideas, that there are better fuels than dynamite and that the fuel doesn't have to transport itself into space are what makes the space travel lark possible. Okay. So there's really, it's a, so we have to start thinking about then what type of fuel and rockets we want to build because that depends on how much energy we need out of it, how fast or slow it's released, and also where we're going, right? Depending yes. on, as we talked about with potential energy and orbits, it matters differently whether we're going to a low Earth orbit or to geostationary orbit or even outwards towards the Moon and Mars. And we have to imagine that most of the fuel is not going to make it into space. That's right.